What's going on guys? I've got a short, super useful video. Uh, this is something I use all the time. It is an SSH config file. Now, this is really useful because the more you get involved with SSH, the more servers you're taking care of or working on if you're a developer, the more complicated often your SSH memory has to get. So you have to like remember, uh, this server has uh, this port open, this other one has another one, a third server is running SSH on 443. Maybe you've got a couple different keys. It's like an old key that you still log into your personal servers with and a newer key that was so belongs to a company that you use for their servers. You've got them all on the same machine. So managing identity file, all of this kind of takes up some brain space. And most of all, it just takes a long time to type. And I'm lazy and I like to save typing. I'm going to type so much that I'm probably going to get carpal tunnel at some point later on in my life. I'd like to save myself as many keystrokes as I can. The nice thing is you, with SSH, you can create aliases and other stuff. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's dive in. There's two places to configure this. One is, uh, as with most Linux and Unix software, there is a system-wide configuration, which you can overrule with a per user configuration, which can in turn be overruled by command line arguments. The first, the system level SSH config is in Etsy, SSH, SSH config. And you can see it sets some different stuff. Uh, this is Debian based, so this is like sending along Lang LC and other stuff. The one I'm interested in is the user config file, which uh, doesn't exist by default, but you can create at SSH config. In here, I've got two things. One that I use for everything, and then some aliases for hosts that show you some of these key value pairs. So glob, as with bash, just means everything. So for all hosts, server alive interval and server alive count. So this is basically, if you're sitting with maybe 10 tabs open in your shell, and you're logging into a whole bunch of different servers, and then maybe you don't do anything in that SSH connection for, I don't know, a while. What's gonna happen is, uh, unless the server's keeping alive the connection, that connection is going to be terminated and you will basically get a broken pipe when you try to write something in there and maybe a frozen terminal window and you'll have to close it and then re-SSH into that server. It's really annoying and time consuming. So what I like to do on the client, which means that you can do this whether you have root on the remote server or not, is simply set server alive interval to 300 seconds. So that means send a, a null byte or something every 300 seconds to keep something happening in the connection so it doesn't get cleaned up. And the server alive count max is simply how many packets can be missed before something is probably wrong on the server and you're just gonna close it down from the client. You can also see how you can have some things that apply to every connection. So I don't have to write these things down here for this alias or for this one, it's simply applied to all of them. So in this way, it's almost like CSS, you know, it cascades through your config file, if you will. My God, that's artistic. So here we define a host. We just want it to be called LXC. If we didn't have it just called LXC, we would have to type in SSH J Denton at this IP dash P and then the port number. It's kind of annoying. Even if you're like reverse searching all the time, it's kind of annoying. Here's a simple config. Host name is one of these keys, and then it takes either a host name or an IP address. User is another one of these, and then a username. Port is another one of these, and then here. I'm just gonna demonstrate that for a second. So I can simply say SSH LXC, and that's the same as saying jdenton at IP port this. I can just say SSH LXC. Shazam, I'm there. For something a little bit more complicated, you can see uh, we've got a local forward set up. And I'm being a gateway because I'm nice like that and insecure. What's SSH local forwarding? Well, it's that thing that I always confuse with remote forwarding. I can never effing keep these things straight in my head. There's SSH remote forwarding and local forwarding. I just looked this up to be sure, so I'm actually talking about the right one. Local forwarding 
is the one. It, it, the difference is really just the direction the tunnel is going in, which thing you're forwarding onto your local machine. So the local forward is taking some port on a remote machine and forwarding it so that you can access it locally. That is locally forwarded. A remote forward would be the opposite, where you make some local IP address, some port on your machine available to a remote machine. So remote forwarding is uh, like useful for maybe if you're troubleshooting a connection with somebody and you're setting up a VNC or, or some, something that they can like graphically get onto your machine and you can show them something. That would be a remote forward. You forward some local port to some remote machine over SSH. This is the opposite. It's a local forward. And a local forward is simply you're taking this machine, which is running SSH, is sort of the middle machine. Matter of fact, I'm going to draw you a beautiful little diagram. Let's just cut that out. Localhost over SSH to that internet facing machine running SSH. That terminates your SSH tunnel. And then on that same subnet as the internet facing SSH server, you've got a local, let's say, web dev server that's running something on port 80 that is not accessible from the internet. So this is, let's say, is your, your company network, okay? You want to get to some internal web development server. It's obviously not open to the public because every little cracker in the world would be fuzzing this thing. So instead, you simply set up an SSH connection between you and this public facing server at your work. And then from there, you're saying, hey, could you please get port 80 from this internal machine and just paste it onto port 8080 on my local machine here. That's a local forward. So it's very useful. Also because uh, I trust my local network here and everyone on my subnet is a personal friend of mine. I'm going to say gateway ports yes. That's like the dash G option if you're doing this in the command line. And that basically says anyone else on my subnet can also just ping my machine at 8080 and connect through to this remote machine through the tunnel, remote machine port 80. All right, so that's like kind of complicated. And especially me, because I never remember local, for is it local forward? Is it remote forward? It's really effing annoying. You set this thing up and then you simply do SSH forward without a login web dev. You run this thing, it returns because you're not logging in, you don't, you're not getting a shell. And then you simply hit up port 8080 in your web browser or something. And then that actually is port 80 on the remote machine. So there you go. That's like a pretty useful and pretty, I guess, more complex SSH command that you don't need to remember. That's the point. I've got accounts on, I don't know how many machines. I've got a couple different uh, SSH keys, like identity files. You can do all kinds of stuff that you don't have to remember this way. You don't have to keep everything in your head. So... Just a couple other things, just so you have seen them. Um, identity file, that's another argument you could use. Uh, another key you could use, you could say SSH, you know, alternate key, like, I don't know, your Amazon keys or something, right? But th these are, I, I have the most important options here uh, for more. Obviously, just uh, SS man, man page, right? SSH config. Um, and that basically covers all the different options. So host, match, address family, batch mode, bind address, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can customize to your heart's content. And like I said, even more complex things like forwarding options are in there. I, I mostly, I admit, I, I mostly don't do like crazy forwarding stuff with this, but I, I mostly just use it to not have to remember IPs that aren't, that don't have like an A record in DNS. I use it to not have to remember usernames and ports. I like to set up SSH on weird ports. It saves me from having to remember where everything is. So be lazy, learn just a little bit about SSH config files, join the cool kids. Uh, we can use our brains for better stuff than remembering arcane and sometimes complicated SSH commands. And most of all, just typing all that stuff out. I hope that's helpful and uh, gives you sort of a starting point. I'm gonna paste something into the description um, there's an, a useful Ubuntu wiki link that sort of explains some different stuff about uh, port forwarding and SSH options. Hope that's helpful. Remember to favorite, upvote, tweet me, uh, 
Twitter me, uh, thumbs up, like me on Facebook, etc., etc. If you don't, you're endangering my self-esteem. Okay, right, see you in the next video.